Hello guys and welcome to episode 2 of our Fluid Logistics Guide. Now in the last episode we were talking about piping and basic and advanced functions with pipes as well as an example with the cold generators. In this one we're going to be talking about head lift and how to get your liquids higher and other options to you. So we're going to jump straight into it. Again this is the second episode. You can find the other one in the top right hand corner. Now anyway let's jump into it. So first off, overcoming heights with liquids. Now in order to transport liquids above a given head lift, you will need to make use of pumps, packaging liquids and conveying them by the use of trains or through head lift. But first of all, what is head lift? Well, head lift is the vertical height a fluid can rise to within a pipe and has a couple of factors. The first factor is the given head lift of a source. So for example, the water extractor. This gives 10 meters of head lift, allowing water to flow 10 meters above its output. This head lift changes depending on the building. So for example, a Mark 1 pump gives 20 meters head lift. The second factor is the elevation of the source. For example, an extractor placed on a lake situated on top of a hill will have the current elevation's height as a starting point for its head lift, plus a further 10 meters head lift from the source. Compare this to an extractor placed at the bottom of a hill, you can see that head lift from two extractors can have varying degrees of head lift. The most important thing to note, however, is that most buildings reset the head lift at that particular point that it's been placed. So it is always best to place pumps at the maximum head lift height to get the most reach out of your pipes. Most buildings have 10 meters head lift, with the exceptions being the fluid buffer, which has up to 8 meters head lift. However, if the buffer is half full, it will only have 4 meters head lift. And the industrial fluid buffer has up to 12 meters. I say up to if it has less, if it's filled to 8 meters, it has 8 meters head lift. Also note that you'll find all buildings have between 10 and 20% leeway on this head lift. Moving on, we have pumps. Now, in order to surpass the head lift, we can actually use pumps. The Mark 1 pump has 20 meters head lift and the Mark 2 pumps have up to 50 meters head lift. Pumps need to be powered and can be placed directly onto pipes or walls and when placed on pipes you can see how much they increase the head lift by with a visual simulation of water flow. You can also snap other pumps to this head lift which is a great new addition to quality of life. And just a quick note on using pumps along horizontal sections of piping. Generally speaking, it's not required as what will happen is that a pipe will fill up segment by segment and eventually fill up the end container or refinery. However, you may want to make sure that you have a valve just at the end to stop backflow disrupting the flow of the system. Our next option is packaging liquids. In tier five, you can unlock alternative fluid transport, allowing you to use plastic or one of the alternative recipes to produce empty canisters, which can be combined with liquids in a packager to pack liquids so that they can be transported via conveyor elevator. Now this method takes considerably more work to set up, but it can actually save you power versus pumps over larger heights. But note that as well as packaging, you will need to unpack the liquids as well. Our third option are trains. Now trains are another way to transport fluids. However, do bear in mind the price for running trains definitely removes most of any of the positive applications of traversing heights 
versus pumps. To use trains for transporting liquids, you'll need to unlock the monorail technology. And the one big perk to trains, however, in my opinion, is that they do look awesome. But there is equally a major drawback, which is if you do not plan correctly, you may find that the throughput of a train is not high enough to keep up with the demand of your machines. And this could have dire consequences if your factory runs off of fuel that is being transported by the train. Next, I wanted to cover an advanced headlift solution. So the final note on this is providing you're not using a building that resets headlift, you can actually take the headlift of a pipe at the top of a hill and run that pipe to the bottom of the said hill and back up the same vertical height without the use of pumps. This is similar to how a water tower works in real life and can certainly benefit you in your builds. This does currently have a slight bug which may be fixed later on. Given this head lift, if you attach extra sources at the bottom, they all gain the same head lift as the pipe with the highest vertical head lift, regardless of if the bottom pipes were already filled prior. This allows you to create some almost entirely pumpless systems, and this works for all liquids. Do note though that as I mentioned earlier, this may be patched at a later date. And yes, you can actually abuse this by packing liquids and sending it up to the top of a tower to filter back down and then use that head lift to bring the liquid back to the top, creating a loop. We then have valves. So valves are one of the newest items in the game. They are powerless and allow you to reduce the amount of fluid passing through, making liquids easier to balance. They do not stop head lift and also do stop backflow. Though their use is limited currently to helping you balance pipes and stopping backflow, I did mention earlier in our previous episode that combined with U-Bends, they can allow us to create a smart overflow system for liquids, which can be very useful. So if you did miss that, do check out our last episode. I'll place a link in the top right hand corner. We then move on to oil. And I just wanted to very quickly mention that I do cover oil in our efficiency build guides. However, for those who are not sure how to balance the resources, if in doubt, remember that you can create a U-Bend overflow system, like we mentioned just prior, to send excess liquids to another factory line to create a physical product that you can then sink, such as petroleum coke. The reason that you should do this is because if your output pipes fill up with excess fluids, this can actually cause your factory to seize up. This is why an overflow system is so useful. So there you are guys, that's my list of everything I think you could possibly need to know that's liquid based in the game. Now I don't think I've missed anything, but if I have then please do let me know in the comment section below. And if you want to see more of my content, then don't forget you can join me on Twitch or subscribe to me on here if you haven't already. Anyway guys, until next time, thank you so much for watching. And obviously, thank you so much to everyone who supports the channel, most notably our Solar Eclipse Patrons, The Calamity, Bo Papa and Tommy Ostgard, as well as our Lunar Eclipse subscriber, Matt Lippard, thank you so much. And not to mention our blood moon of the day, which is Papa Snoozy. Anyway, guys, until next time, thank you so much for watching. And as always, ciao for now.